dear students very good evening to all of you so we are starting this month's youtube session from today so i'll be taking ini ct special biochemistry revision so today is part 1 so first of all ini ct let me know whether i am audible am i loud and clear right if you are not a plus subscriber of the an academy and form i think this is the right time to do so with a plus subscription you get the advantage of daily live classes structured courses live tests and quizzes and you have unlimited access to all our courses as you are all aware trip ladder is now a part of an academy so if you opt for iconic subscription you get the advantage of trip ladder also there are some limited time offers going on i suggest you to utilize these offers and you know now we have four year subscription look at this so we have now four years of subscription so this will be very useful for medical students especially okay so for medical students because ours is a like life long learning process right so this is going to be really useful guys in the comment section let me know whether i am audible i am not able to see any comment okay let me close and open again okay silas thanks for confirming pradeep okay thanks we will start very soon we will start the session very soon okay and in an academy now we have a excellent feature that is called raise a hand so in an academy you can interact with the teacher through audio so very soon i will be able to hear you so nirupam nath thanks for confirming so now i just read your messages very soon in the anacademy platform i will be able to hear your voice and in this way the communication becomes very easy so i will be able to clear your doubts very quickly so these are all the integrated clinical batches which are about to start so 30th june so very soon it's going to start so that is day after tomorrow these batches are starting these are exclusively clinical batches see we have another batch which is starting net knee pg high yield revision batch and target next 2022 so this is going so i'll be taking biochemistry in this so with this we are going to start today's session let's start with the clinical question all of the following are features of van hippel lindau disease except tell me which is not a feature of van hippel lindau disease vhl so ian is thinking it is option b nirupam is also thinking option b nirupam right let me see what about others give me the answer guys anyone else vhl there are three letters okay so it is there in chromosome 3 that's how i remember so there are three letters so it is chromosome 3 and this predisposes to again three letters rcc renal cell carcinoma so it obviously predisposes to renal cell carcinoma 
So what is this VHL? Are you aware of this? What is this VHL protein? What kind of protein is this? This VHL protein, it is an ubiquitin ligase. You might have heard that ubiquitin proteasomal system is involved in the destruction of certain regulatory protein, right? So this VHL protein, it is involved in the destruction of HIF, HIF hypoxia inducible factor. Okay, so normally VHL destroys HIF. If there is defect in VHL, what will happen? There will be increased level of HIF. Is this clear? Again, it is a three letter HIF. So there is increased level of HIF. So everything is three VHL3, chromosome number three, RCC3, HIF3. Is this clear, everyone? Don't forget. So the correct answer is option D. Okay. So there will be high levels of hypoxia inducible factor. Is this clear everyone? Option A is correct. Yes, it is autosomal dominantly inherited disease. VHL is a tumor suppressor gene. It's of course correct. And the risk for renal cell carcinoma and hemangioma blastoma. Okay. So in exam, if they ask you, which is the most common tumor in VHL? That is your hemangioblastoma. Okay. Hemangioblastoma is the most common tumor in VHL. Okay. Also, you can have deafness. Deafness is also a feature of your Van Hippel Lindau disease. Okay. So, with this clinical question, let's move ahead. To another clinical question. Try to answer this. So, Amit is so excited. Amit is saying D, D, D. So, what is happening? Regression of milestones. Right? And female. So, in a female, regression of milestones. So, it's going to suggest what? See, let's see. Cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, you it won't wait till four years. Nah? So, cerebral palsy, there should be some birth injury. You have hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and something should be there. Right? So, this is not cerebral palsy. Ferial ketonuria, again, the mental retardation will be there in the first few months itself. Right? It should start in the first few months itself. Artistic spectrum of disorder. So, in artistic spectrum disorder, what will be there? So, there will be like behavior, right? So, it's not exactly artistic spectrum of disorder, right? So, this most probably is red syndrome, okay? So, this feature is not typical of your artistic spectrum disorder. So, it is red syndrome. Is this clear? Because you have regression of milestone. So, this regression of milestone, he points out. So, in artistic spectrum of disorder, you don't have any regression in the milestone. Remember? So there is no regression in milestone in ASD. Right. Okay, this is a proper nutritional biochemistry question. Try to answer this.
ட்ரக்கர் சாம் பிரித்திகா அம்ரீத் மொரிஸ் கொலம்பஸ் குட் ஒர்க் எவ்ரி ஒன் கீப் இட் அப் கீப் அப் த குட் ஒர்க் சோ வாட் இஸ் திஸ் கொஸ்டின் ஆஸ்கிங் திஸ் கொஸ்டின் இஸ் டெஸ்டிங் யுவர் நாலேஜ் ஆன் கலோரிஃபிக் வேல்யூ சிம்பிள் இட்ஸ் ஸ்வர்ணபிதாஸ் கரெக்ட் ஆன்சர் கார்போஹைட்ரேட்ஸ் ஃபோர் ப்ரோட்டீன்ஸ் they are not the primary source of energy they are also like 4.24 lipids 9 kilocalories alcohol is not a proper food but it is a bad food it provides 7 kilocalory clear everyone so in this question we are just testing your knowledge of this arvil moli option d correct excellent so 40 gram so 1 gram of carbohydrate is going to give 4 kilo calories okay simple let's move to the next question okay this is a question on the topic of medical genetics i want you to be aware of this new things and all so these topics most students they just ignore so there is a vast topic called <laughs> medical genetics so what is known as linkage okay so here after during it's meiosis okay during meiosis i am hiding meiosis hmm. okay so after during meiosis still it's hiding tell me the answer so when will you say that two genes are linked hmm so you know in meiosis there is something called crossing over happens so crossing over you must be aware hmm? right so if two genes are near each other that means there is a less chance that these genes will undergo crossing over and they will be separated apart so linkage means those genes which are near by each other they almost always segregate together during meiosis okay excellent excellent hmm? good so you must be remembering in drosophila melanogaster there were some experiments at all right hmm? margan experiment at all you must be remembering right the color of the drosophila eyes hmm? so this question is based on that only so okay we have to, we are like going to become doctors so we have to discuss the medical aspect of this so what is the medical aspect of all these concepts so we use these like so we use something called linkage analysis so there is something called linkage equilibrium okay right and because of this linkage we can use certain micro satellite markers to diagnose certain things okay so all these are all this topic of discussion for some other day so today i just want you to know this much okay so prakar so prakar is asking hmm, see prakar that that's the thing so if two genes are nearby each other okay they will always be nearby each other in the next also after meiosis also okay so 
they don't undergo crossing over. Is this clear, Prakar? Hmm? Okay, so let's not go too much deep into this. So I just want you to know there is something called linkage, linkage analysis, linkage equilibrium. That much is far enough today. Hmm? So let's go step by step. Hmm? Answer this. Okay, I think I have to go this side. So that you can see all the options clearly. Are you able to see the options clearly? So what is the role of promoter? Excellent everyone. So I can see that you are all answering nicely. Varun, Prakar, Krishna, Shushrut, Swarnabi, Neeraja. Hi Neeraja. Sudipta Panda. Hi Sudipta, Morris, Anish, Parthiban. Everyone who are answering correctly. So promoter is the region of the gene which is involved in binding to RNA, polymerase and transcription factors. Excellent guys. So there is no need of discussion in this. This is a basic question. Good evening, good evening, Sunita. Good evening. Arunmali, correct answer. So what is A? He is asking. Allow for alternative splicing and recombination of genetic components. See, for, so for alternative splicing, there are certain signals. Again, Maurice, don't worry. Don't, do not go into this much deep. Okay. So when you are focused on INACT or NEET PG entrance exam, you should focus on those topics which are high yield for exam purpose. Okay. Next. Which of the following process is not a type of RNA processing carried out by eukaryotes? Sham, yes, good evening. So, which is not RNA processing? Which is not a method of RNA processing? Tell me. Is it tricky? Huh? Why are you thinking for a long time? Prakar, Sushrut, good, good. Yes, what is option C? Option C is a DNA repair mechanism. Clear? Yeah. Option C is a DNA repair mechanism. Hmm? Good work. Otherwise, capping, tailing, splicing, and RNA editing. These are all the post transcription processing of RNA in eukaryotes. Because in prokaryotes, the mRNA does not undergo much modification. Okay. Because in prokaryotes, transcription and the translation they are coupled together so this is based on population genetics question so which is not a condition for hardy wienberg equilibrium so for a population to obey hardy wienberg equilibrium there are certain criteria so, which is not a criteria? Vinod Kumar? Yes. 
So the word HNR and heteronuclear RNA we use in eukaryotes, not in prokaryotes. In prokaryotes, there is not much modification. Okay, we know the So tell me, mm -hmm. so what are the conditions for Cardinian birth? Okay, hi Nitish. So it seems you are having doubts. Everyone is answering A, B. Everything D also. No. <laughs> Nitis, these are all neat PG topics also. Hardigan book hmm? in community medicine. You will read this in community medicine. In community medicine, if you see, there is a population genetics chapter. Preventive and social medicine, right? So in that book also, you will find this. Okay, so you will find all the criteria. So to obey hardy Wienberg equilibrium, you know, right? hardy Wienberg equilibrium, what is it saying? A plus B, the whole square is equal to A squared plus B squared plus 2AB. So one is a dominant ideal, one is a recessive allele. So over a period of time, the frequencies of these alleles, the phenotypes, they are constant. That is what this is saying. So the frequencies, they will remain constant until unless there is a natural selection which is operating on the population. Clear? So, to obey hardy Wienberg equilibrium, the, uh, the mating should be completely random. Then only you will have the frequencies equal, right? Hmm? Negligible mu mutation should also be there. The population size should be large. Okay, there should not be natural selection operating on the population. Clear? Hmm? Okay, so Morris is asking weightage of Bicom 5 or 10 percent. So it's 10 questions. Okay, biochemistry it carries 10 questions, but there is one advantage of biochemistry, right? So Biochemistry is related to certain topics in medicine, certain pediatrics topics like inborn errors of metabolism, right? So in surgery, there can be questions based on acid-base balance and certain physiological concepts also, they also come under this. Uh, and of course, as Varun is telling, of course, pharmacology, okay? Right. Okay. So that is the advantage of uh, learning biochemistry. By learning biochemistry, you get one step closer to pharma and medicine. Right. So this is, see, look at this. So this is like pathology question. You can say this is a pathology question, but it is also biochemistry question. So this question is on cell signaling. So there is a chapter called Cell signaling. Tell me which of the following mutations in the EGF epidermal growth factor? Pathway could lead to increased proliferation of cells. Excellent, Prakar, Anisha, Varun, Swarnabi, Oviya Tamil, Oviya Tamil, C. 
mutation introducing hydrophilic domains in the hydrophobic region of EGFR. So how will it cause persistent thing? Hydrophilic domains in the hydrophobic, it's not going to cause now. See, constitutively phosphorylated ERK. So ERK is a kinase. So this kinase pathway, if it is constitutively phosphorylated, what will it do? Will be active, na? Clear, Sudipta? See, option A is the answer. Mutation causing constitutively phosphorylated ERK. That will lead to this. Okay. So ERK, map kinase pathway. Okay. So these are all the things you should be aware of. This. Hmm? So if hydrophobic region of EGFR, if there is hydrophilic domain, that will lead to what will happen? That will lead to defect, na? Okay. Okay, another question. Again, cell signaling. How do packs and pack promote cell death? You know, BCL2 is anti-apoptotic. BCL2, this one is anti-apoptotic. Whereas, packs and pack, so what do they do? So, they are Pro-apoptotic, right? Hmm? So, how do they? Achha, okay. So, okay, options are missing. Okay, sorry. So, I think the options, I forgot to paste the option. Anyway, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So, backs and, so, I'm extremely sorry. The options I forgot to paste. Okay. So, how backs and back, they promote cell death. So, how do they do? They promote the release of cytochrome C. Hi Anisha. So backs and back, they promote the release of high golu, good evening golu. So they promote the release of cytochrome C. Clear? Hmm? So cytochrome C is a mobile electron carrier in the electron transport chain. So once it comes out of the mitochondria, that will lead to apoptosis. Okay. Cytochrome C is a heme containing protein. Right. Let's move to the next question. What provides the necessary information to specify the three dimensional shape of a protein. So tertiary structure. So what determine the tertiary structure of a protein? Tell me. So tell me what provides the necessary information to specify the three dimensional shape of proteins. So information it is asking. Okay. What is it asking? It is asking information. See, chaperones, chaperone proteins, right? So, chaperone proteins, molecular chaperones, so they assist. What do they do? Molecular chaperones, they bind to the hydrophobic region of the protein and they prevent the precipitation of proteins. Clear? So, that is the role of molecular 
chaperones. Hmm? Clear? Hmm? So that is the role of this chaperone proteins. But what about the necessary information? So the necessary information to specify the three-dimensional shape of proteins. So that is provided by your primary structure. So there is a Nobel winning experiment. So there is a Nobel Prize winning experiment called Unfinson experiment. Okay. So, so he did an experiment and found that the primary structure is very, very important. So the primary structure, it dictates the higher order of structure. Clear everyone? So primary structure determines secondary, tertiary structures. Okay. So the answer will be option C. Let's see who, how many of you answered option D. Option C. Sudipta, good. So what about option A? So this is quaternary structure. The protein peptide bond, peptide bonds, that maintains the primary structure. It maintains the primary structure. Clear everyone? Hmm? Right. What? Two important second messengers are formed when phospholipase C cleaves phospholinositide 4,5 bisphosphate, that is PIP2. Phospho-inositide, this phosphate. So here there is phospho, there is another two phosphate. So once you cleave, so it becomes inositol, triphosphate, and diacylglycerol. Is this clear? Very simple to remember. Phospho. So in the phospho you have one phosphate now. So again two phosphates are there. So it becomes inositol triphosphate, then diacyl. Glycerol. So, diacylglycerol will activate protein kinase C and IP3. It opens calcium channels. Clear? Good. Good work, everyone. So, is there any doubt so far? So, we are in the completion portion of this class. So, we will complete in 5 minutes. So, is there any specific doubt, any feedback, suggestion for tomorrow's session? So, so we will continue 9 p.m. every day. Okay. So, tomorrow also we will I will start 9 p.m. So, tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So, every day I will come 9 p.m. Okay. Uh, Vishwadeep Bhattacharji. So, Vishwadeep is asking why not option D. So, Vishwadeep, I think, did you join? Uh, okay, which one you are asking? This one? Or previous, uh, sorry, previous question only you are asking. Na? The proteins interaction with chaperone proteins. I think this is what Vishwadeep is saying. This I explained Vishwadeep. So, I told already that chaperones, they assist in protein folding. They are not containing the necessary information. Are you understanding? The necessary information is there in this. Okay. So, information is there in the primary structure itself. We are going to discuss some more questions. We are not leaving. Okay. Guys, stay in the class. We are not going to finish. Now, it's a five more minutes are there. Hmm? Wait, wait. We are still 
continue. So which is the depth signal? Simple question. Okay, Prakar wants inborn error of metabolism questions. Okay, Varun wants bioenergetics question, right? Bioenergetics is my favorite topic. Many of you know. Shushrut, Neeraja, Prakar, Deepak, Ovia, Sudipta, Varun, Arul Moli, Dr. Farhan, Her Hijab. Good work, Bishwadeep. Okay. Great work. Okay. Try to answer this one. Which organelle would be least important in a cell that creates and secretes proteins? So yes, Deepak, ubiquitination is a ATP dependent destruction of proteins. Arulmoli. Arulmoli, please revise your answer. And Arulmoli, no need to mention in every comment, sir. Okay. So here you think you are saying yes, ER. So yes, ER is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So smooth smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This is involved in lipogenesis. So it is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. You see, this is the endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes will be like this small and large okay so rough endoplasmic reticulum is the one which is involved in post translational modification of proteins because protein synthesis and post translational modification will happen and the golgi apparatus that is in continuation with your rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. So the post translation you modify the proteins, they go to gold guy, and in gold guy, you have these vesicles. You might have studied na COP. So COP vesicles will also be there, and there will be a vesicular transport and all. Okay. So ribosome is needed for protein synthesis, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and gold guy apparatus because they are needed for secretion. Okay, so obviously they are needed. The answer is clearly smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Right. Tell me which of the following proteins are abundant in the extracellular matrix? We will complete with a simple question. Good. Varun, Deepak, Sushwat, Sudipta, Vishwadi, Prakar, Neeraja. Great work, everyone. The answer is collagen. Right? Good. Arun Shah. Nice. So, acting. Cytoskeletal element. Tubulin also. What about myosin? Myosin and all, it's a molecular motor. Okay, so they are all inside the cell. Collagen is there in the extracellular matrix. So, as Biswa they be saying, it's an NCRT question. Yeah, true. So, sometimes I want to put some simple questions also. Okay, so because there will be learners in various stages. Hmm? So various stages of learning process will be with us. So there will be some expert, there will be some beginner. So I want to uh, encourage all of you guys. Okay, so with this, I think we can complete today's session. So we have a lot of questions. Don't worry, we will do it. Hmm? 
So tomorrow, 9 p.m., I want all of you to join. So guys, I highly encourage you to go for an academy plus subscription. So if you are interested in plus subscription, you can use this code Karti Live so that you will get instant 10% discount. Thank you very much everyone for joining today's session. I wish to see all of you tomorrow 9 p.m. Good night, good night, good night everyone. See you guys. See you tomorrow.